I recently joined Dan and Kyle from PS Admin to talk about PeopleSoft's pluggable encryption technology, or PET for short. You can find that podcast on their site or through our YouTube channel. In this episode, I thought it would be fun to walk through a quick PET configuration. Now, we can use PET for encoding and encryption. We've used it for tasks as simple as, say, Base64 encoding text or as complicated as generating and validating OAuth tokens. In our integration tools update class, for example, we show how to use PET to generate and validate JSON web tokens. You can find PET under People Tools, Security, Encryption. Now, it st starts here with a list of libraries, those libraries showing the algorithms that are available. Some of these are PeopleSoft specific algorithms, whereas others come from common libraries such as, say, OpenSSL. Now, the simplest pet solution involves an algorithm chain and an encryption profile. An algorithm chain is an ordered series of algorithms through which we pipe a set of data. The starting point for each algorithm is plain text, and the end of the chain produces our final encrypted or perhaps encoded result. Some algorithms, such as HMAC SHA-256, require keys. So an encryption profile is an algorithm chain paired with keys. Now I want to keep this simple. So let's create an encryption profile for Base64 encoding. Now technically Base64 is encoding, not encryption, but the configuration is the same. So we'll start online by configuring our algorithm chain and then creating an encryption profile. You might say this is the pluggable part, and then we'll write a short people code snippet to encode some text. Now let's create our algorithm chain and let's name it JSM base 64 encode. Now our algorithm chain is an ordered list of algorithms. The output from one algorithm becomes the input for the next algorithm, chaining each algorithm together. For base 64, we start with PS Unicode to ASCII. Most algorithm chains, in fact, start this way. People code is Unicode, but most algorithm chains start with ASCII, so we must first convert character sets from Unicode to ASCII before we can continue. Now, the next step, let's make sure we order these. The next step is our base64 encode. Again, sequencing each step. And then when we're done, we'll convert backwards from ASCII back to Unicode. Save this. Perfect. Let's now create our encryption profile. And we will name it JSM base 64 encode as well. Now, the algorithm chain encryption profile here, the alg algorithm chain is incredibly simple. It doesn't contain any keys, but it's very common to create an algorithm chain that may be used in a variety of different encryption profiles. A great example of that is JSON Web Tokens. JSON Web Tokens walk through a series of steps, of course, starting with PS Unicode to ASCII and ending with ASCII back to Unicode again. Somewhere along the line, though, uh, we're going to run it through HMAC SHA-256 to and supply a key. And then we would also perhaps have some Base64 encoding in there as well to get the end result in plain text that we can then pass along as part of the JOT or JSON web token. Now you might create that encryption, that, that algorithm chain for JSON web tokens, and then use a variety of different keys, maybe perhaps validate a JSON web token from this site, validate a JSON web token from another site. Now, I don't recommend creating JSON web tokens from PeopleSoft. I mean, you can, we show how to do that. Uh, but PeopleSoft isn't designed to be that system of record for creating tokens. Rather, instead, I would want to validate the signature of an existing JSON web token created or generated by another third-party system. Anyways, I might want to, 
for that example, create algorithm chains, one single algorithm chain, but create separate encryption profiles. In that case, of course, my encryption profiles would have different names from my algorithm chain. But in this case, there's no difference. It's one algorithm chain creating one encryption profile with no different keys between them. So chances are the encryption algorithm chain and the encryption profile here in this case are going to have the exact same name. So I'll choose add, specify my algorithm chain, and then we're going to see here the sequence of items. Oops, we can see that I forgot to sequence that. Great, I'm glad I did that here so that we can see troubleshoot debug. Notice we can see here the chain sequences, they're wrong, one, two, null, blank, empty. So let's quickly go back to our algorithm chain. Oh, and you saw that it was actually showing up first when it's supposed to be the last. So let's fix that. ASCII back to Unicode, that's supposed to be the last step. And let's go back to our algorithm encryption profile and make sure that is updated. Perfect, awesome, the steps are in sequence. Now, if I did have some key sets that I was supplying here, for this encryption profile, then I would do that here. Within the algorithm, the, the chain steps, the sequence, it would ask me, what key do you want to supply for this particular step? But we don't have any here. This one's very simple. Okay, awesome. Now let's go into Application Designer and let's wire up a quick test harness to test out this encryption profile. I want to create a new application engine program. Let's use that for our test harness. Let's see, let's save this as JSM pet test and then oh you know first thing I like to do whenever we're creating a test harness disable restart now tell me write it in the comments there how many times have you created a restartable app engine program I think it is kind of interesting that uh, uh, restartable is the default and actually know that kind of makes sense because we probably are supposed to be thinking for restart but now honestly how many of those restartable app engines have you created I mean doesn't it seem like Disable restart is the very first thing you do when you create an app engine program. Anyway, that's a rabbit trail. Let's go ahead and create a, an action here. Uh, people code action, save again, and let's put some people code in here. Now, just to save some time, I created a people code fragment. Let's put that here. And how about, let's put in our mission statement here. And providing an un paralleled people tools training experience that's what we want to encode so here just walk through the people code really quickly we're going to create an object it's called the crypt object we just use the people code crypt function passing in the hard-coded string there crypt then we open our encryption profile jsm base 64 encode here let's go back online, make sure we've got that right. JSM base 64 encode. JSM base 64 encode. Then we specify what text is it that we want to encode, providing an unparalleled people tools training experience. That sounds like a perfect sentence. How about we end that with a period? And then let's just print out the result. We'll just print that to the app engine log. Okay, now we've disabled restart. So let's go ahead and run this. And we we'll use my favorite run control ID here, run01, output to log. I see the log here that it's going to create. And it's running, it's running, and it's done. Okay, let's look at the log that was generated. And ooh, look at that. We have our encoded output. Okay, great. You know, is that actually multiple lines long? It looks like it is, isn't it? Interesting thing about Base64, I'm just going to mention this really quick. Again, another rabbit trail. I mention it because a lot of people have asked me about it. You might notice that your typical Base64 has line breaks in the middle of the Base64, just at, the, at a line character breaking point. And a lot of people ask, does that matter? In fact, they want to eliminate those. You know, it really doesn't. It really doesn't matter. I mean, it depends. <laughs> you know, that's probably a better answer. <laughs> it depends. That's always the right answer, isn't it? It depends. Your typical base 64 for a MIME encoded message where you're sending that over a text-based protocol such as HTTP, no, it doesn't matter. If you're creating a JSON web token and you are digesting that to create a signature, yeah, absolutely, 
it matters. So keep that in mind. You may actually need to go through and pull those back out, the base 64 breakpoints. You might need to pull those back out. Anyways, let's look through at a base 64 decoder online here. And let's decode and let's see. Oh, look at that. The output results there. Providing an unparalleled people tools training experience. Perfect. Do you have experience with PeopleSoft's pluggable encryption technology? If so, leave us a comment and let us know what you've done. We'd love to hear about your experiences. The content for this soundbite was adapted from our Integration Tools Update three-day course. Are you interested in learning more? Check out our website to see our latest offerings. Or here's an idea. Subscribe to our LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter feeds to receive updates every time we post a course. Or even better, give us a call and let us help you develop a people tools training strategy. Now, if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe for more content. And we look forward to seeing you in the next episode.